Hello, this is a video on exoplanets, how we find them with astrophysics. Exoplanets are planets outside of our solar system. Stop! Can you just say exoplanets in like a really epic kind of way? Okay, so like... Exoplanets. 16 years ago, we had no idea that there were other planets outside of our solar system. Hello! Anybody out there? There are four common methods of finding an exoplanet. Radio velocity. Gravitational microlensing. Astrometry. The transit method. The radial velocity method is when a planet moves around a star, the planet is moving, but the star also moves a tiny bit, and we can see that movement. I am the sun, and this is the planet. As you can see, I am moving the planet, but the planet is also moving me. Can you still tell that I'm moving? Radial velocity measures the Doppler effect of the light of the star, but astrometry, a whole other effect, measures the, the exact movement of the star. You know how when a car passes by your house, the sound changes tone with distance? The same things happen with stars, except with light. Astronomers use the Doppler effect to determine distance. Gravitational microlensing is when a planet moves in front of a star, and the gravity of that planet bends the light of the star. That is gravitational microlensing. The transit method is when a planet, an exoplanet, moves in front of its star casting a small shadow on the star. The transit method is so hard, it's like trying to see a mosquito in front of the sun. The sun is of that exoplanet is so big, and the exoplanet is so tiny, that it is almost impossible to find the shadow on the sun. To use the transit method, the planet has to be at the right angle between us and its sun. Let's say this is the sun, and this is an exoplanet. Now you might be able to see the shadow of it as it goes around the sun. But if we see it from this angle, we'll never see a transit. Even though we can only use the transit method when the planet is at the direct angle between us and its sun, there are an estimated 100 billion planets in the Milky Way, so the chances of finding one are pretty high. With our current technology, we've had much more luck finding large Jupiter-like planets than small Earth-like planets. It's one thing to find a planet, but it's a whole other business to find an Earth-like planet with liquid water. For a planet to be inhabitable by humans, it needs to be in the Goldilocks zone, which means it has running water and isn't too close or too far away from the planet's sun. This is the sun. This is Venus. Too hot. This is Mars. That is too cold. This is Earth. Just right. In order for us to see an exoplanet, we need a- STOP! We can't see exoplanets. We can only know their mass and maybe their distance from the sun, but that's pretty much it. Okay, we can't see them. We can detect them. But in a few years, if we have a satellite with a mirror the size of a football field, we might be able to see them. In 2018, NASA is scheduled to launch the $8.8 .8 billion James Webb Space Telescope. $8.8 billion? That's a whole lot of money! Well, $8.8 .8 billion isn't that much. I mean, America, which is 4% of the world's population, spends $54 billion on their pets each year. What do you have against pets? I'm not against pets, but look, if people stopped buying their dogs chew toys and just gave them a stick, we could have two planets to pamper our pets on. Okay, so like this? No, I would not like this? 
like it. Dog. So like this. No. This one doesn't like it either. Dog. Dog. All right. So like this. Would you like this? No. Ow. Ugh. Fetch. He doesn't want to stick either. Well, we don't really need a satellite. I mean, we have this earth here. Why do we need to move? Well, here we are. The whole human race on one little planet. I guess the only thing that we can do is hope and dream. Right now, we couldn't even dream of going to an exoplanet. We could dream of seeing one.